Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating the memorial of St. Lucy. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the glorious intercession of the Virgin and Martyr, St. Lucy, Give us new heart, we pray, O Lord, so that we may celebrate her heavenly birthday in this present age, and so behold things eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Thus says the Lord, Woe to the city, rebellious and polluted, to the tyrannical city. She hears no voice, accepts no correction. In the Lord she has not trusted, to her God she has not drawn near. For then I will change and purify the lips of the peoples, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia and as far as the recesses of the north, they shall bring me offerings. On that day, you need not be ashamed of all your deeds, your rebellious actions against me. For then I will remove from your midst the proud braggarts, and you shall no longer exalt yourself on my holy mountain. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks, with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and to those who are crushed in spirit he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, O Lord, do not delay. Forgive the sins of your people. (laughs) 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son said in reply, I will not. But afterwards he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. This beautiful gospel about, I just want to emphasize, which was probably very obvious, of how difficult what Jesus here is saying that for the, for the Pharisees or the, the chief priests here to hear that tax collectors and prostitutes are in, entering the kingdom of God before them. It, it's scandalous to say that. But yet it's so beautiful because we hear, we, we see here the way that the Lord is opening the door for all people. It's put here in the context of this, this parable of the man who had two sons. The first son said no, but then later said yes. And then the second son said yes, but then later did not, did not do the father's will. And what we see here with, with the prostitutes and the, and the tax collectors, they were living lives of sin. They heard John the Baptist, the call to, to repentance. But still more, they came into contact with Jesus and they discovered how good he is. And so they turned over their life and were transformed by him. It's not just a, it's not merely a changing the mind, you know, as the gospel, it, obviously there's, there's depth to the gospel. But they came into contact with how good Jesus is. And the chief priests here were, were closed to that. They, and they, they remained hardened of heart and weren't able to, to have their lives changed. Today we're celebrating this memorial of St. Lucy, who was not a tax collector or a prostitute. She was one of those holy virgins, the early, one of the early um, virgin martyrs, put to death because of a, in a way, it's dr during the, um, the Diocletian persecution, in a way, because of the jealousy of a lover of hers, um, was, was jealous of God because she had given her life totally over to God. But how beautiful here we see Lucy who chose to follow the Lord. It wasn't just a choice of hers, but again, she discovered how good God is, the beauty that it brought into her life, that she wanted to hand everything over, everything. And it wasn't just her body and, her, and the, the whole of her, that was, the, that was the bulk of it, obviously, a huge gift. But she was also a part of the, a, a rich family at the time, and she let her wealth go and after her, her own mother had, had been healed um, of, her, of, of her illness. She let her wealth go, and so that her, her whole life was changed. Again, it wasn't just a hard-knuckling decision but it was through this encounter with the Lord and how good he is. It's part of the beauty of Advent. It's part of the beauty of Christmas that we're meant to continue to have our, our eyes opened. It's part of the beauty of, of Lucy today too, of course, with that tradition that she had her, her eyes plucked out and then restored later, that our eyes are meant to be opened to the beauty, the gentleness, the goodness of God. And so have our minds changed in that way and our hearts softened. Let's stand together.
and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. The Church, the body of Christ, may receive renewal and refreshment from the Lord's approaching nativity. We pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit offer them insight in working for the true and the good. We pray to the Lord. For those struggling to turn away from sin, may God fill them with his strength. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord grant us the grace to hear the voice of the Lord clearly in our Advent preparation. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, especially for Ellen Perrault, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be welcomed into God's presence in the eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. God of truth and righteousness, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, Blessed Lucy, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. Then when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, when we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To 
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Bernard our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the, the eternal, God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every, with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and, the, and rest and the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of Blessed Lucy, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.